Good morning, ladies and gents. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be uh, rebuilding the uh, rear brake caliper. I'm going to clean it, new seals, uh, a new uh, brake pin for the brake pads to run along. Uh, the pads are going to stay in for now because I think they're okay, but um, you know, on inspection, if they are a bit crap, I'll buy some more. But that's easy to do once you've done the caliper anyway. So the first job I've got to do is I've got to take off the exhaust. I don't have to take off the exhaust, but for this video and to make it a bit easier for myself, I'm going to and take off this panel so that I can get to the uh, the brake fluid reservoir. So let's get started. So first thing I'm going to do is just get off this uh, reservoir cover. I'll make it easier later when we start draining the fluid and bleeding the brakes. And get the exhaust off. So it always pays every tools laid out, but I obviously forgot to get some of the tools out <coughs> that I need. And so to loosen off the exhaust, it's a star key. Or it's Allen key even. Yes, yeah, the right one. that loose mm -hmm. and the exhaust bracket is a I think it's a 13 no it's a 12 yep So you don't have to take the exhaust out off you know to do this but it does give you more space to play with when obviously you're trying to get access to the caliper see my bot bottom exhaust even loose I always did a good job of sealing that last time And it's off. Before I put the back on later, obviously give that a good clean inside. As you can see, carbon on there. But this bottom pipe's going to need resealing as well, which has not been done for some time, so that's all right. Let's even take that off. The bottom clamps are terrible on those. It's a job I didn't think I'd need to do today. But as with anything, when you're stripping your bike, there's always something that you didn't think about. So, when I get the jug, so when we undo this, there's going to be some fluid. We can put it straight into the jug. That's why I've got this towel to catch the excess fluid. And then we can get on with taking the caliper off. Okay, so first thing we're doing, loosen off the brake caliper. It's strange how that one's smaller than that one. A, what's that one? 14 for some reason. So we've got a 12 and a 14. So I'm not using the impact on these because. You see, I'd rather just go by feel. So I'm just loosening those off for now. And I'm going to undo this pin as well while that's in situ, because I think it'd be easier. You 
say I'm working in my kitchen because it's warmer. I've got a feeling this is going to. So we might need the impact on that because that's not budging at all. Should know it's never gonna go simple. Not when I'm doing it. Wow. So then bits aren't very strong. I'm gonna have to tap that round, I think. Gonna take some getting off this one. The screwdriver is just slipping. Well, I guess that's why we make these videos. To show how we get around the uh, the problems that we have. Now the new um, the new pin I've got is a different fitting so this one's obviously not been out for a while that's why it's so tight I just hope I can knock it out otherwise it's going to be a short video Yeah, the bit, uh, the bit twisted a bit, <laughs> the bit twisted, oh my word. So they're not strong and I can't hammer it. See, I can't really do risk putting too much pressure on the pin because obviously I need the brakes to still work if I can't get it out. But I do need to find a way to get it out. So I just need to with a plan and obviously while it's on the bike you've got the you can you can apply some pressure when it's on off the bike I imagine it's going to be harder so currently a little bit stumped got some other bits Here we go, just took a decent bit, although it's, that's just a cover, well crikey, that's just a cover, didn't know, that's why it looks strange, that's not going back in. So the actual fitment to get it out is a star key, so I best use the socket on that in case I apply too much pressure. These things are sent to testers, so they say. So. Well, trial and error, though. That's why we do <laughs> these videos. I think if I had not watched any YouTube videos, I wouldn't know how to do anything. They've been so helpful. I've watched some really, really good people make some fantastic videos on here 
Well, that's been looped well, so that's, that suggests they might have been done recently. Well, not recently, but at some point. some copper grease on these bolts oh they've been well looked after which doesn't surprise me really because the bike the bike seems to have been well looked after before I got it so then obviously this will just lift off and I can take this off now but what I am going to do is I take the pads out once I've got this out do, do, do. be helpful if I don't lose everything So, just looking for the bit I used for the brake pin. I think that's it. Not really sure how you lose a pin in a few seconds, right? Pads come out. I'm going to keep them together as they came out. Keep them safe there. Camera seems to be hunting for focus a little bit. That pin it's getting replaced anyway, but where the hell? Now it's time for the banjo bolt. Which is a 12 mil. That's took me by surprise, so I wonder if I was going to put the bolts back in. Seems everything's a surprise today, doesn't it? But I've never had this back caliper off. So, I must admit I'm a bit new to this part of the bike. I did the front caliper, and that was straightforward. I must admit this one no clue what I'm doing I'm actually tightening that up that's better but by tightening it it came loose yes I'm going to pretend I knew what I was doing so later on I've got this pipe which I use for bleeding. This is the jug that the liquid's going to go into. It's already starting to leak, so let's get it out. We've got two new bolts. Sorry, two new washers for this. I 
fact, you know what, before I even do that, because for some reason the liquid is not coming out much, so let's just use this to our advantage. And yes, I should have done this a minute ago. But like I say, I'm blagging it. I'm going to push on the caliper, the brake bloody plate, brake pedal, to get the piston to come out as far as I can. This will make getting it out easier in a minute, unless you've got a, a tool for removing these, which I have not. There is an easy way of getting these out. And that also has freed up some liquid. And that's a really safe way to get the um, the piston out without putting pliers on it, and scratching it, and needing a new a new piston, which they're about 26 quid. Which is a lot. So this bolt we're reusing, washers were not. And in a minute, because that's not leaking, which is brill, let's put the banjo bolt on the table, put the washers for waste. Then that's the caliper off. Next step, clean and rebuild the caliper. So this is the caliper off. I've just taken, um, I'm just taken this bit out of there. So I'm hoping you can see that that, it's like a, a guide pin in there. This is the new rubber to replace that. It does look a bit different, but I'm thinking the principle is the same. Um, it's quite filthy, to be honest, as you can see. Um, all grimy in there. Mucky in there, I'm hoping the camera's behaving. Um, well, so in the kit, we've got a new bleed nipple. Is it, is it focusing? Bleed nipple. Two new washers. The two new seals. Bleed nipple cover. New pin, actually slightly a bit, slightly longer. And these are from TRK Braking and from Wemoto. Um, I tend to get most of the stuff from Wemoto.com. They've been brilliant with um, helping in the past when you know wrong stuff was ordered with a chain. Um, so all the bits and bobs there. I found the custom service fantastic with uh, Wemoto. The price is good and I bought a kit. I think that kit was it went more, it, I think it was, the invoice was on here, so. what was it, let's have a look, that kit was £13.50 from Wemoto for that brake caliper repair kit, I bought the pin separate from them, uh, they sold the, the pin separate and that was £3.80, so not bad, and like I say I don't, I might not need to do the pads, the pads Look like they've got loads of life in them so i just want to give this a clean so i'm going to go over to the sink i'm going to struggle to video that i think because uh, of the light but i'm going to so basically to um clean these you just use some soapy water and use a, a, an old toothbrush because it's not going to be difficult i mean look at the the grime on that it's really mucky Better it, put the light on. I'm using a phone for this actually because I can go near the sink. Starting to see it's uh, slowly coming clean. I don't use any, anything too abrasive because all this needs to be left alone really. Build up a brake dust over, even though people use, you know 
your brake cleaners and you're doing this, this and this to keep your brakes clean. They're not, they're not getting that clean. And you have a feel around the lip inside there and just feel how good it feels. I've took the seals out and just feel if it feels smooth or if it's gunked up. And it looks quite good and feels quite good. Um, bit of a lip in there. Because on the front ones I had to use um, some wire wool to smooth that out because it was it was gross. Right, let's clean this clasp. This is quite delicate so you really need to be careful with this. And again look at the, the muck coming off. Now I, I did use a spray my brakes with brake clean regular but you don't get into it. You can't physically clean this unless you take it off which, and this can be done I mean cleaning these bits can be done fairly regular you don't need to, to strip all the piston out well, we've got some scotch brat on that I think and then we've got this bit as well this is that bar again this needs to be kept as smooth as possible this just needs cleaning without any effort it's just grease on there really Brake clean, we'll get that off. Or a bit more soap. That's my cat, you can hear jumping about in the background. She can't understand why I'm talking and she's not getting the attention. So this is just a little bit of, it's like scotch bright, but it's not, it's not quite as uh, harsh. Again, I really don't want to use too much force on this. This doesn't have to be, as long as the main contact bits are clean, because there's some quite fragile little bits on there, so you, you do need to be careful. And all this will be getting sprayed with brake cleaner soon to get off the soap and water. this I'm really lightly cleaning this because this needs to be smooth so I'm very only applying very very little pressure and I mean literally hovering the material over it with the soap letting the soap do the work and I'll show you what I'm going to do with this in a minute to finish it off anyway, which will smooth it out a bit more. We do that over at the table, because that's how we're going to clean the piston. So that's now nice and shiny, but I will smooth it out a bit with some metal cleaner. It's only a few days after Christmas and we're cleaning bike stuff already. Although I did clean the bike yesterday because uh, I figured if it was dirty on camera you'd rip me to bits. <laughs> Maybe. I'm going to make sure I clean this sink as well otherwise I'll get shot later. So while we're at the sink, I'm going to spray that brake cleaner. I'll just dry. That's going to get cleaned anyway. But brake cleaner is really good at getting the moisture out of the caliper. So spray it into where the bleed nipple 
would be. Get into there. Into there. Using this brake cleaner, which is pretty good. I get it from local uh, hardware shop, support the locals and all that. It's about three quid. The place near was well, it's a fifteen-minute drive, and I can buy cans of it for a quid, like. But because I needed it soon, I do like this. But these tins are a bit bigger. I just buy that one. But as you can see, it's still wet. But I'm going to show you. I'm going to dry it off with the compressor. See you in a minute. So, after having cleaned this at the sink, um, I'm just going to use a compressor to dry it off properly. So inside there now is going to be really nice and dry. It's going to get some time anyway before we uh, reassemble. That's now looking quite good. There's a bit of uh, corrosion in there. So I'm going to see if I can remove that before we put the seals in. We don't really want any corrosion in there. Let's see if I can do it with a cloth. This is why last time I used wire wool. Just being gentle, just just running a screwdriver without really running it. Just it's just knocking it off. It's just knocking it off. No, no pressure. You don't want to damage the where this where the seal sits. So just cleaning that in there, and I'll put some brake cleaner in. Just to see, just really, if you're careful, you just run the screwdriver around that. And it's a very fine screwdriver. Simple as that. So we're just going to get the brake cleaner to blow that out, to wash that out, and then I'll be back with you. Okay, so we're going to start cleaning some of the components now. And uh, one of the best ways to clean things um, I've found, uh, old bits, is to put some metal cleaner on a cloth on a bench and just rub this through it and that gets off the worst of it and then just buff it down with a cloth remove the excess and then that's obviously nice and shiny now. Ready for installation. This is our piston. So as you can see, it's a bit grimy. So we're gonna to need to get that shiny. Now, same thing, put a cloth on a bench. Keep his spares tidy. Puts cloth on a bench. This is T-cut metal polish. You can use whatever metal polish you like and with this all I do I've got as you can see I've got the blankets on the thing and I just rub that across the across there just rubbing across the, across the cloth even I can't even see it make it a bit spongier I'm getting off that. But I don't want to use anything too abrasive on these pistons, they've got to be they've got to be super smooth. So you just have to be patient and keep polishing. 
eventually it does come off. The front ones were terrible, really, really, really mucky. You see it's starting to take off some of the gunk as well. So it's getting there, and then we just need to inspect the quality of it. This is taking a bit of a bit of a harder rub, so as much as I like doing it on the bench, I'm gonna try and get around that rim. I'm hoping it is muck and not not broken. Well you know what I mean. Not surface anyway. But you can use a, a very fine finishing sandpaper sometimes, like you would on your stanchions. You can't afford to scratch the metal. But that is coming off. It's just taking some time. So I've just used some two and a half thousand grit paper just to take off the tops of what must be some slight corrosion on there. So, you know, even though you, it is mucky, it was also very slightly corroded, which means at some point this will need new piston. But as it's on most of the bit that sticks out anyway, and not the bit that's plunging in, it'll be okay. I had this on the front calipers and they've worked fantastic since I stripped and cleaned them. So, you know, feel free to do that. But I think the next time I do this, I will just replace this piston. Um, if the corrosion was further down, which is going through the, the seals more, which obviously, if I were to put some new pads on, some of that might go inside under the seals a bit more. But I've done it so it's smooth. I can't actually feel any of that corrosion, even though I can still see some of it. So that basically will run through the, um, the seals quite nice. Yes, these are old socks, come in handy for mucky jobs. Every now and again I have a clear out and <laughs> socks and boxer shorts end up being dirt rags, polish, cloths, whatever. So that's now starting to look quite nice. That's really smooth. But so I don't leave on any contaminants on there, I'm just going to use the brake cleaner, which I've... I don't know where I've left that. So I'm just going to clean this with brake clean now so there's nothing on it, nothing to react with the um, this, the uh, red rubber grease that's going to be going on the seal soon. So that's clean and ready. Uh, it's ready for assembly now and your caliper will be dry so in the kit they have sent some red, red, red rubber grease although to be honest I think I do like the look of mine but I'll use theirs so we know what it's like if it's rubbish I shall let you all know so we've got this new this new seal to go in And I'm not going to be clever and tell you what this does because I don't know. Just the bolt goes through it, and I think well, the caliper obviously, as you, as you may know, the caliper when you break the first pad pushes against the disc and then pushes the, the whole caliper back against the back. It put what pulls the whole caliper back towards the back of the uh, brake disc. So this all needs to move. So that's I'm guessing that's what this is for. Put a bit of red rubber grease on there. 
because that's a boot so it should be sealed and if I'm doing this wrong feel free to leave some comments be polite though so obviously other people need to learn how to do this I'm doing it the hard way so and that's that just going to push it back through and then push it in again and that's now seated you have to almost push it through then push it back too far through as such and then that's now seated nicely in there put this back in This just pushes in, in theory. Get that under the lip. That rain's really coming down today with snow this morning. Making chit chat. So we've got our new seals and the biggest one goes in first so in there is the light dropping off a bit there yes it's got so dark outside hasn't it so so we're putting red rubber grease on this plenty on I can always wipe it off the excess in a bit and this just pops in I found put the I put my finger in first at the bottom and then just feed it in and pull it back so it gets into place doing it for the camera is harder I must admit So that one's in. This is the outer seal. Send you plenty of grease. I know the focus is hunting, I can hear it. Using a 5E Mark IV for these videos, and I've got to be honest, there's got to be a better way. I know they're a brilliant camera and I use it for my for my job. But for making videos, it's a bloody nightmare. The inbuilt microphone on them is not very good, so I'm going to use an external mic. It's just fantastic for photography, and I suppose they're good for video if you, you know, you're using it a certain way. But I've got to be honest, it's it's a bit of a nightmare. I, th I think you can't. I think for this, I've always said as well, when it comes to photography and videography and things like that, I'd rather use a dedicated video camera or a dedicated camera. And this is. Can and bring these cameras out now with everything on them and even though you can do 4k you need a massive memory card anyway i'm going off topic 
So before I reassemble this, I'm just going to clean up this where I hammered it earlier and just get this back bit ready. So I'll come back. Okay, so now I can put in the, uh, the piston. So you've got to be very gentle with this and make sure you seat it in and then just apply some pressure and let it just go itself. What you don't want is that to happen where it just goes in one side. So you need to apply equal pressure. Just now that it's done that, just check the seals are still okay. Yep. Try again. Like I said, equal pressure, it will just pop into play. There you go. It's now just seating in. And that's roughly where it was before we started. Because obviously. We know where the these pads sit because they're new pads, uh, not new pads, they're the pads that come with it. So I'm just going to go wild a sec. So that's how it looks clean. Top of the piston's nice and shiny now. And we're ready to apply to the bike. Caliper banjo bolt pin these. One of the bonuses to the way this has worked out is um, this has not really lost much brake fluid. So I'm going to be able to bleed that through with uh, some new brake fluid, which is great. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the pads in. They just sit as they did in there. That's right. Correct way around. Always got to double check. Bring them back a bit. The new pin. We can tighten that up properly in a bit. So, got the new bleed nipple on there as well. A new washer on the banjo bolt so we need to put the other banjo washer on in fact we can do that when the bike's on the bike the simple reason is I can feel the pads jumping about And on there, there's a clip. Now, that clip's going to hold these in position. For anyone who was watching these slide all over, I'm wondering what the hell is happening. Just need to push that piston in a bit further. Crazy design, this really. I've changed brake pads on cars and and the bikes, but these real, these real ones, I don't work. Out, I can't work out why they're so strange. I know if that piston needs to be seated different, but it's like on the front calipers, the pads are locked into place before you even. Put the caliper back on the bike. But with this, <laughs> they want to sit in a thing, there's nothing there. It's 
excuse the camera one second, it's, it's hunting for a focus. Because my arm's in the way, no doubt. So that's where that needs to be. So let's make sure that rear pad is seated. So we'll get those bolts. As you remember, the big bolt went to the back. And the little bolt, or the smaller bolt, is at the front. Just hand tight everything at the minute. That was time when it came off, wasn't it? Banjo bolt. And again, just going to hand tight this because we've got some. This pipe moves about a little bit. In fact, I just want to inspect that. That's just where it leaked. Remember what, what with these washers, once you've crimped it up and the washers have taken shape, then you've used the washer. So if you decide to take this all to bits after, you're gonna need new washers. Well, it seems obvious, but it's like with sump plugs, sump plug bolts, once you've got them off, that's it. So that's the caliper stripped, cleaned, and put back on. Um, all I need to do is um, just tighten everything up and then bleed, bleed, oh, my word, bleed the brakes. <laughs> and, uh, and then I'm, I've got a, some work to do in the exhaust, which I'll do separately. I won't be dealing with that, boy. But I'm gonna show you how I bleed the brakes. So I'm gonna get everything tightened up and then I'll come back to you. So now we're ready to bleed the brakes. Um, so as you'll probably noticed earlier on, I said that no fluid came out. Well, that's because I left the cap on the, the reservoir there. So obviously that helps a lot when it comes to keeping some of the fluid in, which means I don't have to use as much when it comes to bleeding. Now, this is obviously gonna have no fluid in it. So it's gonna take some fluid to fill that up before we can even start to bleed but what we need to do is try to fill it up so i'm just going to pump the brake pad brake pad brake pedal and then i'll show you how i bleed a lot of air in there so i'm going to have to bleed the air out so as you see what i'm doing pedal up open pedal down close 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 and that's procedure obviously i've got to get all that air out it might have been better to open the cap at the beginning to be honest um but i didn't so as you can see i've got the tube five mil tube coming from the top of the it could be an eight mil tube and it's five mil tubes it's an eight mil spanner so it's five mil tube onto the nipple and down into the jug at the bottom and that's basically how I'm going to bleed it. I've just got to get all this air out first because you're going to take some time. Well I'll fast forward this bit if that's the case and I'll have a drink of tea at the same time. start to feel now that the fluid's moving through and 
to be fair, my jug thing at the bottom isn't the best, but it's free. So open, pedal down, close, pedal up, open, pedal down, close, pedal up, open, pedal down, close, pedal up. As you can see, the liquid's starting to come through now. We've got the air out. Now I need to put some fluid into the reservoir. And over the back. And just keep with this procedure until we've got a nice clean brake system. So I'm going to put a cloth around that so that I don't keep spilling it. It's a fresh, um, it's a fresh pot of brake fluid as well. to see how it feels if it's too spongy I can always bleed them again but that seems quite good so big thumbs up just now to reassemble the exhaust and clean everything up but that's how I uh, clean dismantle and bleed the brakes thanks for watching <laughs>